What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Spencer. And uh, <laughs> what I was planning on doing today was the Sacred Beast deck profile. Uh, but I've changed the deck so significantly that uh, I, I'm still messing around. for something. Like, this deck you can take in so many different directions. Uh, it's kind of up to your play style. And I still, like, in my mind, have not decided which one is the best one. My recent discoveries is two things. is I think this is best as a Blind Ghost second deck. Which sounds weird because you have summoning sickness so many so much of the time. But it's about like forcing your opponent to have as least amount of advantage as possible and then capitalizing upon that. Uh, so I'm gonna show you just some some replays I have here uh, of it. These are all, I believe, blind goes second. You know, the thing is the deck can also obviously go first. There's a very big control aspect of it. You see that there can be only one. And you see this now. Now, if you've uh, followed the channel and you followed like me playing Sacred Beast for a really long time, I used to say that you can't play Sacred Beast with your Raya, like all three of them together. I also kind of changed my mind on that. Um, what ends up happening, in my opinion, is if you can draw Hyper Blaze, it's really, really good. Um, like you can get this thing up to like 4,000, 6,000 attack pretty easily. There's a lot of trap cards that I play in the deck. So that's not really the issue, um, and a lot of times you can pick and choose when you when you grab it right. And this again, this is a very spell and trap heavy format. So like right there, boom! Like in one turn, I got this thing up to four thousand attack. It's going to up to five now, uh, but since it's such a he heavy spell and trap format, uh, I feel like that leans more in Uriah's favor. And it's only two cards like <laughs> that you have to add into the deck. It's really not that much, not much of of it as a commitment as I had once thought. Um, so now that it is that way, I have a lot of cards like, you know, Cerulean Skyfire. You should only play like at one or something like that. Um, I play that like at three now. Um, and then I just talked about Uriah. Uh, so that's, that's part of it here. I think I'm going against, uh, Unchained. I have two, uh, duels against Cyber deck after this as well. Really, this is more of a testament of the power of like going second cards than anything, but, um, obviously it's fueled by this and uh, the deck is actually more consistent going second there's less pressure like that extra draw is usually always gets you like something that you need to get going and like I said now like our advantage is kind of even but sacred beasts are very good at accumulating a ton of advantage very quickly which is what I'm gonna do now and the also the great thing is if they ash blossom your pot of extravagance by the end of your little combo chain here you're going to have Fallen Paradise to your hand. You actually can draw two. Uh, you only can't draw for the rest of the turn if you draw the cards from Pot of Extravagance. Uh, and then here's There Can Be Only One. This is a complete Fiendtime deck. This just kills uh, Unchained 100%. Uh, I do have, you know, the unfortunate part is that you'll end up going into these going second cards that are dead in your hand. But, uh... As you guys can see, I'm obviously in a pretty decent place at this point. I'm going to keep it just attacking him because the great thing about this is there can be only one can be really restrictive and it's extremely less restrictive now uh, once you had, like now that I have your eye in the deck. Um, uh, but even if you are locked into this, let's say, well, you can just keep, every time they throw a monster face down, they're on an eight clock turn automatically, right? Because they're going to take damage like that every single time. Um, the, de the deck I'm also focusing more on in uh, like the, the small, like the nightmare packages like Unicorn and um, like Phoenix, all that kind of Cerberus. Those are all really good. And this is kind of ridiculous. At this point, he is basically done for, right? Every single time, and I actually forgot to set the there can be only one. Uh, that was a big mistake by me. But um, he can only kind of destroy one thing at a time. Uh, and I obviously have a negate as well through all of this. But... Once per turn, he can kind of destroy the There Can Be Only One, but I get it back every single turn. And now he can't activate monster effects. I think he tries to do it here. And uh, yeah, so if you have two Awakening of the Sacred Beast as well, uh, it's not like this. It's just, oh, shoot, man, I drew the second one. Uh, you get the um, the life point adding to you twice. Like the effect goes off twice. Uh, I've never gotten all three on the like if you have all three on the field it doesn't matter like the turn of banishing everything because uh, you can't do it all at once um, but anyways here's Cybers. I think they're gonna like complete an extra link here 
again, like this is would be an okay hand going first. Like you have plays if they force you to. Um, in fact, it's it's, it's essentially full combo. Uh, where two sacred beast uh, plus fallen paradise, which in my mind that's what I qualify as that. But the fact that he's gonna like commit so much to the board, and, and I've been saying this a lot, but clearly the format is more about disruption uh, or stun than it is about like putting a bunch of negates on the board. Like that time is over. It's all it's way more about control. So if you, if you can just blow your opponent going out because you're not worried about negates, like. Against Dragon Link, and then it's Prime, this card would be useless. Here we go. Boom, there's your whole field. And now, when you do this, because in and of itself, like, you're hoping that Fallen Paradise gives you a great draw. Like, let's say you go into Awakening of the Sacred Beast or Cerulean Skyfire. I had both of those at the time. But sometimes you're really just going to be sitting with two Sacred Beast and Fallen Paradise. That's okay, but it's a lot better when you know you have all these other things backing you up and your opponent doesn't have as many cards as you and you've disrupted their board. That's kind of the ideology behind it. If you guys are Sacred Beast players, like you can tell like I'd be curious to know like in for the comments for you guys, like how you feel about it, like what your Sacred Beast builds are looking like. I'm I'm actually really quite happy with what it is now and where I'm going with it. He's playing catch up this whole time. So even when he blows up this board, I've essentially accumulated so much advantage. He, he can't catch up with me. And yeah, that was also... When I show these replays, I, I like to... I don't like to just make myself look like the greatest duelist of all time. Because I'm obviously not. Uh, but there's also a re weird ruling here. So I try to go into Nightmare Cerberus because Excess Kotaku has no protection. And you can get rid of it any way you want. So I was going to go into Nightmare Cerberus, and I actually used my Haman with it. Uh, but when you do that, this actually misses timing. It's one of the weirdest Yu-Gi-Oh! rulings ever. So it has to, like, Nightmare Cerberus has to be the ne like the next thing that activates when it's summoned. But because a, a Sacred Beast left the field, Cerulean Skyfire is like, oh, you're not taking damage for the rest of the turn. It's actually some sort of activated effect. So the Nightmare Cerberus doesn't go off. So I have to waste another card here going into Nightmare Unicorn to get rid of it. Uh, but at this point, I mean, I still have this. I'm gonna, I'm still going to be able to go into like a Sacred Beast next turn. That's not the issue. Uh, he has the Ash Blossom here. Uh, that's when he decides to Ash. But that's like a waste. Like, why would you do that knowing that I have Chaos Summoning Beast? It's nice to know that your graveyard is always a resource. And uh, again, the cool thing is about like, because Nightmares, Unicorn, Cerberus, all that kind of stuff, you do have to discard a card. You can almost always get that back one way or another, either through opening the Spirit Gates or Awakening of the Sacred Beast. Here is uh, another duel I had. I think I think this was like my match, so sometimes I like to show those when I can. Uh, he's going to go into Dotscaper. And, uh, this is kind of inconvenient. This is my draw engine outside of Fallen Paradise and all three of them right in. You know, not exactly what you'd like to see. Uh, but you can live with it definitely because you know this card can do a lot for you. Uh, this is like a summon and a search. And you're getting something off the top. And, that, and again, that's another reason why I really like going second. It feels like it does bring it to the next level. Just that one extra thing. Uh, he does have this Sinet Conflict, which stinks because it actually banishes. If it gets destroyed, obviously it doesn't matter. Uh, and he top decks a Twin Twisters. Uh, because their Kabili one is the end. Uh, like, you <laughs> as a Cybers player, that that is it. Again, because of what I did early in the match, I have all these cards, and I'm just going to be able to continue on going. I already have the Hyper Blaze in my hand. I know I'm going to be drawing two, because I'm going to have two Sacred Beasts. I'm going to be able to protect at least one of them from the card destruction. Let's see what I can get off the top. I end up getting a their chameleon one, and then I also have the hyper blaze. I don't even think he takes it that far, because after he realized their chameleon one is on the field, rip, and, and uh, he surrendered. But um, and the last one I'll show you is uh, again. I like what I'm trying to do is show you where these guys like. I don't want to just be like, oh, I dominated. See, it dominates all the time. Uh, I want I want a little bit of pushback, and this guy definitely does so. Uh, yeah, we do know he has a soul servant there. Uh, Battle Fusion, I'm not sure about that, but uh, massive uh, spell and trap removal, really bad. 
So going second guarantees you're not going to get Lightning Storm, which is the good part. That also gives you a better chance to win. I wait until main phase two uh, to go into it because I can attack. Obviously, this is going to have summoning sickness, not just for the Sacred Beast, uh, but for all of your monsters, which stinks twice. Uh, and then um, look at th this guy really is just 5,000 IQing it. Uh, he draws into a none other than a Spellbook of Knowledge. Gets a Magician's Souls with the Dark Magic attack in his hand. Uh, I have 13 on life points, so I'm, I'm feeling okay. Definitely going to need something up the top. He even had the Apprentice of Illusion Magician to get over it. Um, but top decking, opening the Spirit Gates is normally enough to take you really far. Because now I can search this, and I have all these cards in my graveyard. So I'm going to be able to summon uh, a Haman and... Again, this is kind of a testament to why I am playing uh, Uriah, because Hyperblaze lets you add them back to your hand, which is really nice. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that was kind of like where he was going to go with that. Like, that was the end. Uh, I'm going to be able to keep adding back the opening of the Spear Gates. I can use it next turn if I want to search something else, i.e. Hyperblaze. That way, like, if you were able to get rid of him on this turn, normally I'd be dead, because I don't normally play Hyperblaze, but now you can. Uh, which is cool. Uh, so that was a, uh, another short look, a little a literal update video on Sacred Beast. I think these replays are really good. Let me know what you guys think about my theory in the comments down below. But other than that, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. And I hope you have an absolutely wonderful night.